Hi, this is uh, Barry Coombs from defineTomorrow.co.uk and virtualizedreality.co.uk. I'm here with Chuck Dubuque from Tintree Storage, Senior yes. Director of Product Marketing. Yes, fantastic. Yeah. Um, what we're hoping to do today is just learn a little bit more about Tintree. I'm sure many people have heard about Tintree, but maybe you could give us kind of a top level about who you are and what makes you different. Sure. And um, why people should come see you at VMworld. Yeah, uh, Tintree is a uh, Next generation storage startup company. Uh, we concentrate on storage for virtualized machines. So, uh, what we do on the hardware side is probably not very different than a lot of our competitors in the hybrid and off-flash space. So, what we offer is, uh, you know, our, our software integrates with vCenter. Yep. Um, integrates with other hypervisor management systems as well. We know uh, which I/O is associated with which VM. Okay. And that's how we lay out the files physically. Sure. But it's also how we um, provide I/O through our through our array. It's how we do um, things like replication, snapshotting, all of the VM level. Um, that's the primary object of management from an automation and, and manageability standpoint. So we've got a hybrid storage platform. Correct. So we're able to deliver good performance. Yeah. In fact, uh, our hybrid platform is where we started. Okay. Um, so um, a couple of things that are unique about that. Um, our hybrid has a higher percentage of raw flash than most of the competitors out there. Um, and we also treat it as the primary storage layer. So whereas most hybrid systems write first to disk and then promote hot blocks to flash, we write everything to flash initially okay. and then only move blocks to hard disk when they're pulled. And when we when we do that, we can take into account what we know about virtual machines and specifically things like what a Windows VM looks like, what a Linux VM looks like, um, so we can make better guesses about um, what blocks sh sh are likely to stay cold or which ones are likely to stay hot. So most of our customers on average get 99% of the I.O. performance from the flash portion of the array. Fantastic. Um, which is much higher than is typical. I think you know, six, 60 to 80 percent of, of the flash hit rate is, is considered very good. With most of our, uh, most of the rest of the market, um, we're consistently much higher. Than that. So we've got uh, sort of a, a great performing, as you're saying, strong um, storage platform at the right. bottom end, but then teamed up with software that is fully aware of the virtualized environment, what's going on, to a per VM level to make you right. like, to make intelligent uh, decisions. How about data protection? Are you able to leverage that for data protection? Yeah. So. So um, for data protection, um, we've got a couple of different uh, technologies. First, our replication is all done at the VM level. Okay. So again, comparatively, you know, typically you would see if you wanted to protect a VM and it's in a LUN or a volume with 15 other VMs, those VMs have to hitchhike along with the one VM you want to protect because all of the array replication is done at the LUN or volume level. Okay. Ours is always done at the VM level, yep. so it makes it very easy to configure. Um, if you have to move the VM from one array to another, that policy can follow it. And there's no hitchhikers, so our WAN efficiency is very high. Um, secondly, we integrate with uh, uh, VM Somewhere's SRM, um, so we have a certified uh, storage replication adapter, um, and again, um, we make the replication portion very trivial. Um, you know, there's still lots of stuff to set up with SRM, but uh, we find that the uh, the Tintree portion of that setup is very uh, very streamlined compared to other solutions. Um, and then finally, we've um, we released a, a, a product called SyncVM, which is, is all about copy data management. So um, think of all the flexibility, potentially, that software snapshots offer, yep. but nobody really uses them because they are uh, they're not very space efficient. They they drain the CPU because the CPU has to read all of the different snaps from the storage array and combine them in memory. Sure. Um, and they tend to be very slow. Yeah. So people don't use them, although they are very flexible. They use array snapshots, but array snapshots, while they're very fast and very storage efficient, um, are very very much less flexible because again they're done at the LUN or the volume level. Sure. So if you go back to a particular snap, you generally lose the forward snaps not just on the VM that you're uh, 
that you're that you're concerned about, but all the other VMs that might be on that same line or volume yep. will lose all of their forward snaps. Sure. And so you tend to not use that except for in the worst case scenario. Yeah. Because of our VM level architecture, you get the best of both worlds. You get all the flexibility of VM level snaps um, from the you know, a software side, so up to 128 VM level snapshots, okay. and you can move backwards and forwards through time. Okay. Um, on kind of like a VMs. PVR kind of thing, yes. moving backwards and forwards. Yeah. Um, so we, we introduced that uh, functionality last year, so you can move backwards, maybe recover some data, yeah. or you know, check out a, a previous version of, of your code against the current database and then go back to the future sure. um, state or anywhere in between. Uh, we've also added the ability to take one of those snapshots and attach it as a um, as a external disk, like yeah. an e-drive. Sure. So if I just want to recover a file, I don't actually have to take the entire VM back. I can attach it at, to itself yeah. as, as, a, as a disk and pull some files out. And then finally, um, because the, the VMs are um, the primary unit, we could take those snapshots, maybe they're on a master virtual machine, and I want to apply them to update 20, 30, 100 child VMs. Yeah. So in a test dev environment, if I've got a database, I can very quickly send the updates, which are just the diffs, to all of the child VMs and say 100 different developer sandboxes okay. uh, without redeploying the VM, without moving very small amounts of data, um, and again, without destroying or recreating virtual machines. So it sounds quite a very flexible platform. Yes. Um, what does the ideal Tintry customer look like? Who, who are the people that kind of come to you? What, what problems have they got? What size are they? Yeah. Is, is there kind of, obviously, you, you want to appeal to as many people as possible, but what, what is the sweet spot? Yeah, I mean, we're, we target uh, mid to large enterprise okay. customers, and typically they have, you know, 70 to 80% or more of their state is virtualized. Okay. Um, we will generally come in for a specific project. It might be a net new project around uh, private cloud deployment or a new application. Um, it could be a VDI project that's not made it past the pilot stage because of problems that they encountered during, uh, during scale up. Um, we'll go in very much tied to a particular use case, prove our value, and then um, start to expand into, into other cases. Um, one of the nice things about Tintry is that you don't have to tune us for a particular use case, and you can mix different use cases onto the same platform. So a company may start off using us for VDI, and uh, once they get comfortable with us, yeah. they'll migrate over a SQL Server VM. And what allows you to have the protection? Because obviously the VDI workloads yeah. are very spike orientated, AV storms and things like that. Yeah. How do you stop that affecting the other workloads on the array? So we, we have an inbuilt uh, quality of service algorithm. Okay. So um, since the very beginning, we've had the ability to isolate each VM to its own IOQ. Okay. Um, and um, within any particular time period, each VM gets the IO it wants mm -hmm. up to the full capacity of the box. Okay. If during a particular time period there's a burst of activity and the box doesn't have enough I.O. to service all of the requests, each VM gets a little bit of latency so that everything gets a fair share. Okay. Um, we've also added the ability to adjust that on a per VM level um, through policy. Okay. So if you have certain VMs that say they're test dev environments, you never want to give them more than 100 IOPS, you can set a maximum and they won't get more than 100 even if they ask for 200. Okay. Um, similarly, if you have a mission critical um, SQL Server or some other uh, latency sensitive workload, you can give, give it a guarantee of a minimum of 1,000 IOPS in the case that the system doesn't have enough uh, to go around. Um, that's something that would only go into effect in an overload situation. Okay. Um, and you can mix those policies, do them at a, at a group level, um, even across different hypervisor platforms. So all your SQL servers, whether they're on vSphere or Hyper-V, um, could have a policy that, that guarantees what performance they're going to get. Brilliant. Thank you very much. So yeah. um, our blog's, blog's called defineTomorrow.co.uk. Yes. Um, what we believe at the moment, obviously, as we've seen this week with Dell uh, announcing they're going to acquire yeah. EMC, there's a lot of change going on in our industry. And I think the IT managers, people in IT at the moment, are looking for 
what, what's the future going to be look like? And we, we're talking about the short term future as well as mid term and long term. And as far as sort of your concern, the storage industry, what advice would you say to IT managers that are looking at their environment today, maybe looking for short term into the future, what should they be considering? Have you got kind of any idea or thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the uh, you know one of the key things we see with our customers is that you know the the days of storage administrators um, turning knobs and dials and spending hours just trying to keep the system up and running and balanced are are quickly fading away. You know, so you know, Tidri is one example, but there's other technologies like Flash, you know, Flash overall, yeah. software defined storage, some of the new analytics platforms that are coming out that allow you to move beyond just you know spinning plates and trying yeah. to keep them keep them all in the air. Yeah. Um, and to be able to you know to, to take a certain level of, of performance and self-tuning for granted so that you can move on to higher value tasks. Um, and we see that being enabled by our technology but you know also things like uh, VMware's VMALS technology um, as vendors start um, enabling that. Um, that gives a lot of benefits to to, uh, to customers as well. Fantastic. Definitely that kind of simplicity message. If you can get rid of the, the things that are taking your time up during the day, you can start to concentrate on the business. Right. And at that point, you're showing real uh, value as uh, IT department. As mentioned in the keynote this morning, that IT yeah. needs to stop becoming a cost center. Yes. Um, and the way you're able to do that is, as you say, if you can trust in the platforms that you're putting your, your virtual machines on, in, in your case, it means that you can concentrate on other things in that time. Yeah, and you can become not just a storage admin, but a data architect for your for your enterprise. Thank you ever so much for your time. Yeah, thank you.